Nestled in the heart of North America, stretching across Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, Yellowstone National Park is more than just a haven for wildlife and nature enthusiasts. It's a living testament to Earth's tumultuous geological past and the resilience of nature. But beyond its scenic beauty and geothermal wonders, there's a deeper narrative. One that intertwines cataclysmic eruptions, hidden mineral treasures, and the enduring spirit of preservation. Long before it became a cherished national park, the Yellowstone region was a hotspot of geological activity. Beneath its serene landscapes, the Yellowstone hotspot, fueled by a molten plume of magma rising from deep within the Earth's mantle, was silently brewing. As the North American plate drifted over this hotspot, magma chambers swelled, setting the stage for numerous eruptions that would reshape the continent. Around 2.1 million years ago, the ground beneath Yellowstone led to the Huckleberry Ridge eruption. This wasn't a short-lived spectacle, but a multi-phase event that spanned decades or more. Out of the three recent eruptions unleashed here, this eruption was the most powerful. It released more than double the amount of material than the supervolcanic eruption that we covered in yesterday's video when we looked at Yellowstone's most recent super eruption. Link to that in the description. In today's video, we'll take a look at Yellowstone's Huckleberry Ridge super eruption. It's often said that Yellowstone has had three supervolcanic eruptions. This isn't true, only two have taken place here. Instead, the truth is that three caldera forming eruptions have taken place here. Yesterday, we covered the super eruption that released 1,000 cubic kilometers or 240 cubic miles of volcanic material. Today's super eruption released more than double that. In the middle of the two though, another small eruption was strong enough to produce a caldera known as the Mesa Falls eruption. It only released an estimated 280 cubic kilometers or 67 cubic miles worth of tephra. If this went off today, we'd notice its effects in places far and wide. But the word only is used sparingly here, as this is powerful enough to affect the climate of the entire planet. If this went off today, we'd notice its effects in places far and wide. But back to the big one. The initial outburst unleashed pyroclastic flows that scorched vast territories. As the eruption evolved, the Huckleberry Ridge Tephra, a vast expanse of volcanic ash and debris, was propelled into the stratosphere, eventually settling over a significant portion of what is now the United States. This ash layer, still evident in geological formations, is a silent reminder of the eruption's magnitude. The climax of this volcanic event birthed the original Yellowstone Caldera, a depression that captures the essence of the park's volatile past. This occurred when the magma chamber became unstable after much of it was released during the eruption, leading to a significant collapse as the Earth above filled the void. In the immediate aftermath, the region resembled an alien landscape, with an entirely new topography. But nature, in its timeless way, embarked on a journey of healing and transformation. The nutrient-rich volcanic soil breathed life back into the land, paving the way for the thriving ecosystems we witness today. In the present day, it's challenging to work out the shape and size of the original caldera as it's been changed by subsequent eruptions. But geologists have painstakingly worked to map the area out, and we have a pretty clear picture today. The caldera from this eruption is referred to as the Island Park Caldera. 2,450 cubic kilometers or 590 cubic miles of material is thought to have been unleashed during this event, making it one of the largest known eruptions in the Yellowstone hotspot's history. The volcanic winter would have been a harrowing event to have lived through, lasting for years to decades in length, due to just how much solar reflecting aerosols were pumped into the stratosphere by the ash plume, only for it to be spread planet wide by the trade winds. But Yellowstone's story isn't just about its volcanic roots. The park is a treasure trove of minerals. From the rhyolite and obsidian formations that hint at its fiery past, to the geothermal display of sulfur-laden fumaroles and the cascading travertine terraces of mammoth hot springs, Yellowstone is a geologist's dream. Recognizing the region's unparalleled geological and ecological significance, the US government in a visionary move in 1872 declared Yellowstone a national park, and it was the first of its kind planet-wide. Now this wasn't merely a nod to its beauty, but a commitment to protect the peace of the Earth's dynamic history. With this designation, pursuits like mining, which once eyed the park's mineral wealth, were halted, ensuring that Yellowstone's legacy remained undisturbed. I personally am against this. I mean, this park's gonna blow up one day. You might as well get what riches you get now, but it is what it is. 
Today, as visitors wander through Yellowstone with its predictable geysers and diverse habitats, they're walking through pages of Earth's geological diary. The park stands as a symbol of nature's might, its ability to rejuvenate, and our collective responsibility to preserve its wonders. So the next time you find yourself marvelling at Yellowstone's beauty, remember you're witnessing a tale of volcanic fury, nature's resilience, and a commitment to conservation that spans generations. Thanks for watching.